Okay, so this is video four, and what we are going to do in this video is name the services over which we are going to do the conjugate heat transfer. In the previous videos, we left, we just didn't name the surfaces between the solid and the fluid, and the fluid did that automatically. To better control it, it would be nicer if we could name them for more complicated models. So that's what we're going to do today. So first of all, I'm going to name these surfaces that connect the solid to the fluid. To do that, I'm going to hide the fluid and do the solid one first. What we need to do is find which side of the solid is the symmetry. So that's the symmetry plane. So this face here is the fluid plane. So we are going to name that. So apply that selection and the key to the name is that it has interface in it. So just like previously we had wall and symmetry, if we have interface in the name, it then knows that that is going to be an interface. You want to select the edge and then go name selection. Apply that selection and again interface disk edge. The important thing is the interface, the disk and the edge bit is for me to understand what's going on. I'm going to do the same thing for the fluid bit, hide all the other bodies. I think if I turn that around we should get it right. And now we're going to name these faces. So all I've done is added the disc face and the fluid face, we're going to pair them together. And the disc edge and the fluid edge, we're going to pair them together. I'm actually going to pair them together in fluent. I think that's open if we make it smaller. There we go. Let's rotate it. So there we have it. There's no mesh at the moment. What it has done, it's made, automatically made contact region which can be fine we did before we allowed it to do that and that was fine i don't want that so i'm going to delete it yes the reason it did that is down here or generate automatic connections on refresh and really i'd like that to be no it's too late now not to worry so what we want to do is mesh what is left so now we have no connections so we're going to just mesh it fairly roughly just so we can progress through to the end as, as always you go back and do the mesh properly so i just put a fine mesh in there generate mesh and there's the mesh okay still not a great mesh we need a lot more here there's another boundary in here it's crazy there's a much thinner boundary there but we're not going to worry about that we go back and redo the mesh properly um, if we were doing this for the final results Okay, so there's fluent, there's our mesh, and there's our disc, I think on the other side maybe. Fantastic. So we're going to work our way down here as before. So let's just make sure we have energy turned on, because we want to do heat transfer. Materials are all fine, we can change the density, so it changes with temperature. Cell zones, what we're going to do in the solid zone is we're going to have some heat generation. And just for this case, I'm going to use a fixed value, fixed values. So I'm going to set the entire disk to 500 degrees Kelvin. And I'm going to do that because it's easier to validate what the program is doing and make sure it's doing what we want it to do. Boundary conditions. So we now have our interfaces or four interfaces, and then we have all the other ones, the, the top, the bottom, the inlet, the outlet, the symmetry ones, etc. So I'm going to leave that, I'm going to come back to that in a moment, there's going to be some extra faces there, because we're going to do with the next one over here, the mesh interfaces. So you will notice, because these are interface, that the mesh interfaces option is now clickable. It's not this dark, this light colour, it's a dark colour, which means we can click on it. 
So we're going to create two interfaces, one for the face and one for the edge of the disk. So create edit, give it a name, we'll call it face. It's going to be a coupled wall and we're going to have interface one as a solid, so that's going to be the disk face. Interface zone two as a fluid, so fluid face. Coupled wall is tricked, so create. Fantastic. If we click on that what now exists, you can see we have an interface between the disk face and the fluid face, and that is wall six and wall six shadow. So if we go back to boundary conditions, you can see now that these extra walls have been created. These four extra walls. So wall six is a solid face, and wall six shadow is a fluid face. We also need to go back in and do the edge. Could have done them both at once. So a solid bit, disc edge, fluid edge, fluid bit, coupled wall, create. So the edge is now wall 21 and 21 shadow. So back to boundary conditions and now we have all these extra walls. So wall 6 is the solid bit. So there's no momentum options in there. But there's a thermal option. Should we want to generate heat on that interface. Wall 6 shadow is the fluid equivalent face. So now we have all these fluid options. So what we are going to do is make it a spinning disc. So we're going to make it a moving wall. A rotational wall. So when I drew the geometry I knew I would have to do this so I made the middle of the disc zero 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 so that's now the center of the disc because that's how I drew it originally. X Y Z is the axis so this is an axis along the Z axis which is what we want. Z is through the plane and let's just stick a speed in a 40 radians a second. There are thermal options but I'm not going to use them at the moment so we'll okay that. So 6 I think was the face, 21 was the edge, so 21 should be the solid edge. So no fluid options, but thermal options, which we're going to leave. And wall 21 shadow should be the fluid version of that edge, so lots of fluid options. So again, moving wall, rotational, same center of rotation and direction, same rotational speed because it's the, it's, the, it's the edge of the rotating disc. Fantastic. So that's now set up with all the interfaces manually. We'll just go through and run the solution. You could modify these depending on what you're doing. I'm not going to bother. So let's just initialize it. Fantastic. We could do a case check. We didn't bother to check your mesh. I should really do that, but I know it's well, I know it's not very good, but it's you know, I know it's okay. We don't have any velocity inlet at the velocity inlet boundary condition so I'm just having a pure spinning disc and the other ones are fine. So let's run that calculation there. Let's stick in a bigger number, 220, and let's calculate. Okay so the calculation is now completed. It's done 220. That number there corresponds to how many we said it we want it to be done. It's not particularly stable, it hasn't really converged, it's still going down and that's because of the mesh isn't great. Our boundary there was terrible, our boundary there our mesh was terrible, that's okay. And also because of the boundary conditions around the domain aren't particularly correct, which we'll go into in a moment. So let's just go and have a look at the results and really all we're trying to do is to show that the conjugate heat transfer bit worked. So we'll do fills and we'll do local values. And first of all, we'll look at velocity to see if the disk is spinning. So we have our four interfaces here. Let's take the disk face. Display. Let's align it and zoom into the bit we want. As you can see, make that bit bigger. The velocities are zero. So even though we have a spinning disk, as far as the solid is concerned, the velocity is zero. If we go to the fluid phase, so this is a conjugated phase, I guess. Display that, and now you can see this is our rotational velocity. So it goes to almost zero in the middle, up to some maximum on the outside. So V equals R omega, omega is 40. The velocity varies with R, which is what you can see. 
if we look at the x velocity positive is off to the right so it's positive at the bottom so it's spinning counterclockwise you could of course put in negative omega or I guess change the axis to get it spinning the other way fantastic let's look at the symmetry symmetry fluid so there now is I guess the edge of the disc is around here somewhere so this is now the boundary layer within the fluid like I said we don't have enough mesh to capture that properly but the spinning disc is affecting the stationary fluid around it the velocity of the disc is much higher than the velocity of fluid so this looks like zero there would be velocities in here in reality in fact if we just show well in fact it'll look the same as here let's now look at temperature so again let's go back to the discs so disc face display zoom in so it looks like it's kind of random it's not it's just that the velocity is the temperature is the same everywhere so it's 500 everywhere and that's what we wanted so the advantage of doing this at a constant temperature that allows us to check that that's working if we do the fluid it's probably going to be very similar so again it's all just about 500 if we do the symmetry plane just to show that it's, the fluid is getting hot and transferring that to the rest of the fluid zoom out a bit so you can see we have temperature and the rest of the fluid now this is a spinning disc we have a wall at the top and the bottom this is the velocity in it and the velocity out there so it's a spinning disc in a wind tunnel if you like so that seemed to have worked rather than allowing fluent to create the pairs for the heat transfer itself where you went in and we named them that has worked and that gives us more control over conjugate heat transfer